Australia. We love our sunburnt country, a land of sporting fields, of roaring footy stadiums, of turf and swimming lanes. When it comes to sport, we pull up our socks and punch well above our weight. And while we've proven ourselves to be world beaters time and time again, one title remains agonisingly undecided. The fight to lift the cup as Australia's national sport. Tonight, our competitors gather for the decider of deciders, ready to pump up their favourite game with a passionate appeal to the most important umpire of them all, you, the sports-loving Australian public. So lace up the boots, strap up that dodgy knee and rub on the deep heat. It's time for the Great Sport Debate, presented by Tag. Ladies and gentlemen, your host, Tony Squire. Thank you so much, thank you so much. Hello, welcome to a very, very special show. Now tonight, we'll try to answer the biggest question since the meaning of life. Just what is Australia's national sport? Now in some countries, the national sport's pretty easy. Baseball in America, oil wrestling in Turkey. It is, it's a thing. But here, it's not so simple. So joining me in this very studio to make their case for their respective codes are five Australian sporting legends representing some of the biggest games in the country. Now fortunately, Sports personalities aren't competitive at all, so we should have this whole issue resolved in a calm and dignified manner within the next half hour or so. Maybe not. It's a massive show. Uh, we have so much to butt heads over. So let's get things underway with our first guest. He's never been backward, but if you get in his way, he might just throw you over the sideline for rugby league, ladies and gentlemen. It's the Raging Bull. See you. We were going to have Laurie Daly as well, but we feared bloodshed. Uh... Can I tell the truth? Yeah, tell the truth. That was fabricated. You wouldn't oh, believe don't it. Tell them. Oh. On 360, we fabricated something. No. So Laurie Daly, obviously, he was supposed to be here as the tab ambassador, and then we got in an argument about AFL. Then I was walking the streets. My phone was lighting up. Everybody loves Laurie. <laughs> Do. Yes. And he's hiding in Singapore as we yeah. speak. Which is, which is, he had to leave the country. He had to leave the country. All right, you're so passionate about uh, yes. rugby league, your code, what it's done for you. What does it do for the nation as well? Well, it does everything. So me growing up in Townsville, uh, black dad, white mum, housing commission, it got me off the streets. It, it was so good for the community. I went, played down Sydney so I could leave Queensland to go to another state, the great state. And then, you know, I played at the Broncos, you had Alfie, his dad's a train driver, to Shane Webke, a farmer, to Wendell Saylor, to Glenn Lazarus. So I think rugby league is a game for everybody. Of course, 72 million, 72.6 million people have watched it this year. So it is the highest rating sport on television, uh, higher than AFL. They get an extra game. Uh, we sell out in every state. <laughs> so they do get an extra game, but we sell out in every state. 50,000 in WA, we sell out in Melbourne. We sell certainly sell out uh, in Sydney and in Queensland. So um, Adelaide we haven't conquered yet, but that's just got nice wines for us, Tony. Because, <laughs> you know, rugby league. The, the young people... We need uh, alcohol. The young people are getting into it, and also the sex appeal of someone like Reese Walsh, who can beat somebody with yeah. a body swerve or just a bat of the eyelashes. Well, the game's growing. So we're up 12% on last yeah. year, and obviously the women's game is uh, going from strength to strength. So soon every club will uh, have it, and that's, uh, and that's growing. So rugby league, and you get someone like Ali Brigginshaw, believe it or not, she got when she was 12, played against Daly Cherry Evans and she got player of the tournament. So now the pathways for the girls to come, they've got their own code, they're selling out, so they've sold out some, sta uh, some stadiums here as well. So, and mums uh, feel it's safe for kids? Uh, it was the safest game. There was a stat at the New South Wales uh, University. It was the safest game to play in Australia till the age of 15. So with all the jumping and leaping, there's ankles and knees, which you need when you get older in life. So my knees and ankles are good. Yes, yes, we might get a black eye, but that can recover. So yes, so yes. Ankles and knees are quite handy throughout your life, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, so yes, it can look rough, but yes, it is rough at, at the NRL level. But when you go and play with the kids in a modified game, it is so safe and it's the greatest game to play. You, you mentioned it, though. What, what about the national footprint? What about the fact that if Wayne Bennett was to walk backwards naked, naked across the Story Bridge, the, the, Melbourne, the oh. Melbourne Herald Sun wouldn't even report it. <laughs> no, but... I'm thinking. Yeah, but that's, I can't unthink and unsee what you just said. <laughs> yeah, yes, I can't for journalists out there, I Wayne Bennett will be Wayne walking Bennett. naked across the Story Bridge Thursday morning. Just to prove 
Hughes. No, well, yeah, I suppose it's the same, you know, like... Um, that's why a lot of the guys that come and play for the Brisbane Lions or the Sydney Swans, they come because they can walk the streets and no-one knows them. Good international team, uh, international, international idea of sport. Las Vegas. We're all going there, of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, so obviously um, every, you know, every sport's competitive and uh, obviously international, we're not as big as some of the other codes, but uh, to grow when there's an untapped market over in the USA and we've got uh, a couple of Hollywood owners... Um, as well, so uh, if we can get over there and uh, it's a five year plan and maybe those guys that don't play college or NFL if they want to try another code because I, it's a great game. What, mate, what more can I say? Well nothing because it's time yeah. for us to move on. Oh. <laughs> Look, uh, they will agree. Yeah. The bloke's taking off his swan singlet now. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. He's just going naked like Wayne Bennett. Our next guest has done, done it all. Thursday morning, Story Bridge, walking backwards. That's him. She, uh, she, not this next guest. I'm talking about Wayne Bennett. She's won, won the green and gold a hundred times. Captain of country, bagged world and Commonwealth gold. I guess being at the top comes naturally when you're 196 centimetres tall. For netball, it's Caitlin Bassett. <laughs> Apologies for being heightest. Oh, well, yeah. he added an extra two centimetres on me. I'm actually only 194 centimetres. Wow. Um, well, I've been looking yeah. for those two centimetres. You can take those two centimetres. <laughs> Have them for free. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, good luck. Play, play, ni play nice, Gordon. Play nice. I love netball. This I do. netball is one of the, the great... We're successful, incredibly successful at netball, at the game, at grassroots level. Just convince me that it is our national sport. Look, I don't think I need to say too much. Following Gordy in particular, I can string yeah. two words together. <laughs> <laughs> I think when it comes to netball, yeah. it is. It's number one participation for females and young girls. It's empowering at the grassroots level. You know, for me as a young six foot tall, 11 year old girl, it was a place where I felt I could fit in and belong. Um, it was a my place worst where... Saturday morning ever. Know, when Dad used to uh, watch my sisters. We oh, celebrate all, all body shapes. <laughs> But anyway... Yeah. I mean, we celebrate everyone within the game. Um, and I think the most exciting thing for me is not only is it a female sport, but now it's growing in terms of the male participation as well. I'm, I'm yep. pretty sure you've played mixed netball in your time, haven't you? Wing defence. Yeah. <laughs> bad to say. Yeah. Yeah. You look like a bit of a wing defence. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Enough to play in the circle, but uh, no, definitely uh, and, uh, the least exciting position. Yeah. Oh, oh, what do you do? No, goal, like goal defence. All you do is that, then get penalised. Yeah. Have to stand you're behind to talk the about how Good your no. sport is not bag the host and bag me. No, look. I think when it comes to netball, it's not only a great game to play, but it's a great game to watch. There's a goal scored every 10 seconds. Um, you know, centre pass goes between team for team, so there's a lot of balance. It's not just one-sided score. It doesn't go for five days without a result, which can no. be really frustrating. <laughs> or no nil all draws within netball. It's, re it's pretty exciting. And I think, for me, it's an iconic team sport. Yeah. Because there's players and they're separated into their sections yep. on court, it takes a whole team effort to get a goal. It's not like one superstar in the team can grab the ball, run down, score a try or, oh, you know, kick a goal do. and things yeah, like that. So probably hard to do. But it truly you know is a team game. Only a, few, only a few of us can do that. <laughs> but anyway. The Diamonds... Mate, I love uh, the Opals. I really love oh, the Opals. <laughs> That's basketball, Gordon. Oh, I'm sorry. So. <laughs> the Diamonds own every uh, title going at the moment, don't they? All the way through. And they've just come back from South Africa where they, once again, have won the World Cup there. Uh, <laughs> brilliant work. Brilliant work. Not, not quite so brilliant from the administrators who put it on at the same time as the FIFA Women's World Cup. <laughs> oh. So not many people knew what was going on. But the team itself is one of our greats. Yes, and traditionally uh, breeds success. Number one in the world for a very, very long time. We just picked up our 12th World Cup. Our trophy cabinet is full. We've got Commonwealth Games gold medal in there. We've got Constellation Cup. We have Quad Series. So everything that could have been won in the last cycle has been won by the Australian Diamonds. And you know what? Tell we me. do it without the money. So, uh -huh. you know, we see the Matildas. They're going to be, you know, 270k for their World Cup fourth finish position. Mm -hmm. The Diamonds wouldn't have got any bonuses for winning the World Cup just recently. That's amazing. You win everything but the ratings on television. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. I At least you want to watch the glamorous girls oh, in the sorry. short dresses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Lovely. Thank you so much. Our next guest smashed a world record when he scored 13 goals in a single international game, making him officially Australia's worst ever ball hog. <laughs> <laughs> For soccer, it's Archie Thompson. what our code does. Yeah. You could just walk out here, be boring and all that, but yeah. we bring it. We Welcome. Bring the it. first guest to just start by sucking up to the audience. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's terrific. Where's Three that? points off Archie. Oh. Uh, you did come in with a kind of Matildas-like spring to your step, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, well, look, I wanted to obviously um, talk about the Matildas, but I'm going to leave that to the end because... Oh, I'm going to go. finish. Yeah, okay. I'm going to go a different tact. I'm going to go to maybe why we wouldn't play this other... Sp codes or sports. Uh -huh. um, AFL, I mean, look, uh, not really much to say about them. I mean, if, if I, I know my taxes aren't exactly done properly, I've got a great accountant, but they, they just seem to know everything. Um, and and rugby, I'm not going to say too much about because look at the size of that fella. <laughs> and that's rugby league as and, well. And I'll say the same about her too. <laughs> Off a couple of World Cups and all this sort of stuff, but and she did mention yeah, the, the Commonwealth. Cups of the men won. How many World Cups? Uh, the Commonwealth Games. So, but really, <laughs> Commonwealth Games. Yeah. It's not even cool anymore. We're not even having it in Melbourne. <laughs> so, um, so and you know there was a bad uh, thing at favelas. You know the what, what are those horns? Vuvuzela. Vuvuzela. Yeah. If you're a hungover parent and you go to the netball with your kids, that's what's happening with the amount of screaming that goes on there. Um, and I have played netball. It's like men's mixed netball uh, in Maribong. Don't go there because they're caddy. The men are caddy, not me. <laughs> uh, and, um, you know, cricket, you, you mentioned it. You stole my thing. It's like, you know, they talk about soccer being... It's a, a sport that you don't score much. But five days and you still get a draw... Yeah. Uh, Any chance yeah, you're talking no, about cool. football? Uh, <laughs> well, right. I think it speaks for itself. Look, look at the Matildas. I yeah. mean, it's, you are. It's, well, it's, I feel like I don't really need to talk about yeah. Yeah, the, female, the female game. It's amazing, isn't it? That is yeah, true. Okay. They have been remarkable. The numbers have been remarkable. The crowd yeah. figures have been remarkable. And also the passion and joy that they bring. The, the question then, I guess, is that will the love and fervour that we show for the Matildas exist for the A-League four months into that season? <laughs> wow, I'd like to... <laughs> I've got uh, a smart television, I can't find that. Yet. <laughs> I'll keep on searching, I can't find it. I've got every app and I can't find it. <laughs> where it is, aren't you? Yeah, this is, this is what I was uh, worried about. <laughs> so why are you talking about everything else? Yeah, but to be honest, like, uh, uh, the women, uh, the World Cup and what they've done, yeah. created like two, 200 million that's going to be invested back into women's sport. Yeah. Like, that's pretty incredible. And I don't know what other code or what other sport would do that. Um, so that's amazing. Uh, yeah, but where you find it, I don't know. But it is... <laughs> It's a, it's a massive opportunity is what it is. For it's the incredible. Yeah, incredible. Whether that gets you across the line as our national sport, I'm not sure. Hey, and, look too, and look too about, like, you know, um, uh, there's a lot of migrants that have come to Australia and they only know in sport being football. So they've almost created their own little communities and clubs. That still keeps them connected to... Am I winning, you guys? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You're done. It feels like connected to their motherland. It's maybe through war or whatever. You're done, Archie. You're done. Yeah. With... with... <laughs> With I'll your fancy meerkat up. socks on, I can see. Very hey, we're good. fashionable too. <laughs> Very uh, cute. I could have uh, rocked up in this kid. The next guest to join us is a true Aussie rules tragic. Uh, he's a Hall of Famer, a six-time All-Australian, played 364 games for the Bulldogs. Loves his footy so much he uh, volunteered to set up a bomber for the greatest mark of all time. For <laughs> AFL, it is the great man, Brad Johnson. <laughs> Yeah, 
Wow. Yeah. Only go to the fans that matter. Yeah, the fans that matter. <laughs> the show goes for half an hour, 20 minutes, because you've got yeah, the audience. They're out there. See, what? One, there's one cricket fan. <laughs> I can see. That's about it. One Matilda. <laughs> <laughs> OK, you can't lose, really. Uh, we, invent, we invented this game. Uh, we, we. See, you've already mentioned we. Well, <laughs> we did. The royal we. That's right. We did yeah. back in 1896. It's just, it's a game that's just grown into an absolute juggernaut, hasn't it? We had, last round, over 7 million fans have gone to the footy this year. And we've still got one round to go with final. So, it speaks for itself there. The fans love it. The players are unbelievable. The most athletic uh, form of the game in Australia and we absolutely dominate it. Do you dominate in terms of uh, states? I mean, if this is a referendum, this whole thing. <laughs> you're dominating again. You're not playing the rest of the world. Oh, yeah, but at least, at least we, at least we are... Nah. At least we are present. Not like, not like. Oh, let's let's win something for Australia and then disappear in all parts of the world. Where where are our players gone? We are here. What's the this number one sport. Though? What is this all Australia? And the though? debate is the best form in Australia, not the world. Australia, and we are number one in Australia. Are you? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I don't think the ratings say that. Oh, <laughs> really? Just saying, yeah, just saying that. Okay. Yeah. How many fans do you get to games? So we rate extremely well, yeah. and then we get 100,000 well, There's not much to do to our finals. <laughs> <laughs> like we got a harbour, like Gold Coast, 52 kilometres of free activity, which is called a beach. <laughs> in Queensland, we've got one of the wonders of the world. So we've got outdoor things to do, but it's OK. It's, all right. it's OK if you want to go sit there and watch blokes run around. And <laughs> see, no, see, because I had a chance to play in AFL when I was a kid, right? And then Wally Lewis came to my school, Jim Myers came to my school, and then Warwick Kappa came to my school. <laughs> what was that like? Well, <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> entertainer. That's what, that's what an entertainer. Well, that's why I chose Shrek. That's right. <laughs> Shrek, the silent assassin. <laughs> he is, actually. And the power. <laughs> what, what about the, the fact that you do, despite what Gordy says, you do have a strong presence around the country? It's, it's a national game. You actually have to build a stadium now to become part of our competition. That's how big it has become. And it's all for the, it's all for the fans. The players put on the show and put on a, an amazing show. But you get to come to stadiums that are just world class. And there's nothing better than doing that. And the MCG is the, num the number one. Better than going to... John Kane Arena to watch some nipple. You can't move it. I love it, and it's all, it's growing. Uh, you've done very very well for your code, uh, and with the greatest smile in the world as well. Steinbring. Uh -huh. Our next guest, a uh, man whose undeniable talent has taken him around the globe, won in millions of adoring fans. And before he was on TV, he played some tests and one day internationals for cricket. It's Brendan Julian. <laughs> Fans are important, Tony. Of course they are. Of course they are. I mean, do you want to talk about great stadiums around the world, right? Yeah. It's called the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Yes. Oh. And we've got the Sydney Cricket Ground. We've got the Gabba, we've got the Wacker. <laughs> Every major sporting ground is aimed after cricket. <laughs> <laughs> Debate, Tony. What do you like really? about this debate? Well, okay. we should be talking about the number Talk two the sport. Head. That's what you've got to debate. <laughs> because everyone knows, everyone knows, cricket is the number one sport. <laughs> it's played nationally all around the country. Yeah. AFL. Well, mate, do you know why AFL was invented? To keep cricketers fit for winter. <laughs> True story. True story. Mm. Football is all about World Cups. Netball. We can't bag the girls because I've got two daughters. <laughs> Rugby <laughs> League, <laughs> they don't even play it in Perth and Adelaide. Yeah, so, come on. I mean, you should be debating about the number two sport in the country. Yeah. <laughs> that makes a great show, isn't yeah, it? It's not that's that's we're debating what's the number two sport in the country. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yeah, no, you've been the big the panel, dog. If you have kids on the panel, who do you want to play cricket? Do you want to sit out for hours in the hot sun? <laughs> <laughs> like, really? Nothing better. For Nothing a game, better. that might be a draw. <laughs> hey, if you're going in the IPO and you're getting $2 million, are you worried about that? Seriously, <laughs> 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 I'll go stand out in the sun for two minutes. Any day of the week. Does it, what about the appeal these days? Because it's always had our hearts and minds cricket, I would have thought. And I, I tend to agree with you. But for kids these days, I mean, uh, uh, TikTok goes for, what, 30 seconds, 60 seconds. A test match goes five days. Can you, uh, uh, can you do the maths for me? Let me just say this, right? Okay. The number one sport in the country 
was invented was called backyard cricket. No problems with selection. No problems with discrimination. <laughs> Everyone was involved. OK, this, your sisters had to field out the back. <laughs> the, the MCC started the rule of saying six and out, they were going to change that. But everyone plays backyard yeah. cricket. So don't worry about TikTok. Backyard cricket takes over that, no problem, mate. And then they wear their clothes to the game and forget their sandpaper in it. <laughs> Scandals are great. Yes. We love our scandals. scandals. That's I what like brings that people too. together. Yeah. Yeah. The Under Armour 1981, Trevor yeah. Chappell. Well, he's Look, we might, we might get that. to that. We've, we do have a scandals, well, culture section. Oh, okay. yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, whole culture. Oh, we love that. <laughs> Always. Always. What about, and you also have a women's team that is immensely popular and successful. The women's team would probably be the best sporting team in the country for the last 20 years. Oh, they've won seven oh, World Cups, they've won okay. 6 T20 World, uh, World titles. In 2020, the 2020, <laughs> well, the 2020 final at the MCG, yep. uh, the women, 92,000 people. Yep. Uh, Like, there's only three top cricketing yeah. countries, really, though. It's like it's Australia, England, around. and India. There's I know, no but that's else, two really. billion people. So Brilliant. that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> you got 1.1 1. 1 in India, you got another 300 million in the UK, you got 20 million here. Hand off my desk! <laughs> I mean, come on, how many people do we need? <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to believe it's Sorry. number one. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. This is your friend number two. Hey. Everyone, loves Everyone loves a runner-up, eh? Everyone loves a runner-up. I love it. Well, look, I don't think uh, uh, the first half, sadly, that's done for the first half. Uh, we might not have solved this just yet. I we... think we did. <laughs> uh, apart from BJ. Uh, we're going to have some oranges, a little bit of water. When we come back from the break, we'll dig a little deeper. What it takes to become Australia's national sports day with us. At Tab, we're on for smarter same-game multis with AFL and NRL player insights that provide recent form at your fingertips, allowing you to build smarter same-game multis. Tab, we're on. You win some, you lose more. Welcome back to the Great Sport Debate presented by TAB. Our esteemed panel have had their chance to make a case for their sport to be crowned as Australia's national sport, but it's too close to call at this stage. So, look, we need to change tack a little uh, and get into the factors that make a sport great. Let's check out our first topic. Oh. <laughs> Most iconic moments. Oh, Brad Johnson, what are you doing under Brad? there? What is Just it? creating iconic moments for the sport. <laughs> Play my role yeah, on match day, Tony. The stepladder role. Yes. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> there have been terrific moments, though, in your sport. Oh, there's been so many. Jezelenko, you beauty, is probably the one that started this in an Aussie rules fashion. But none bigger than when Buddy Franklin kicked his 1,000th goal in Aussie rules. And what happened at the, at the SCG that night is something that, that everyone will, will remember forever if you're there, but also watching at home and seeing all the fans enter the ground, the way that they did to celebrate one of the most iconic moments in sporting history, let alone here and, in and Australia. What, and some of the players, right, to get back into the ground, they had to go out in the street and come back through the field. Yes, <laughs> Chad Warner did exactly that. Yes. But that's, but that's, not, that's, that's good, isn't it? That is, that is, that is good. You're playing the game, you not. can't get in. No. That's, okay. that's all right. Yeah. Well, they, what, they charged them double. It was <laughs> well, what other sport sitting here, though, has a moment like that where the fans can come onto the ground to celebrate with the players in play for, for moments. You might have a streaker. No, well, we're well, yeah. <laughs> one streaker in netball, and it was a man who jumped the barrier, ran across it a big yeah, skip, and I was that. on well, camera well, after a goal had been shot, and I was went. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> everyone was so shocked he escaped out the back door and got away. Uh, <laughs> we won't talk about what your, we won't talk about what your fans. Do. They haven't got that footage, have they? <laughs> <laughs> we won't talk about what your fans do when they enter the field, Archie. And, well, they rip the well, goals down and burn the joint down. Sit so. the members and clap like yeah. this yeah. all day long. So. All right, iconic moments. So, what about uh, cricket? There have been many. <laughs> many. I, uh, Shane Warne would figure in plenty, but there's well, one that you may have even well, been. Well, that bloody ball of the century. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first Test match. Yeah, and I actually got to keep the ball, but Warnie took it off me. So it's actually my ball of the century. But look, that was probably iconic, no doubt about it. Um, 93, his first ball in Ashes cricket, and boom, he took off, didn't he? And I went the other way. <laughs> uh, don't sell yourself short, buddy. Uh, you're smashing it here. Let's move on to our second uh, point here. Which sport has the best culture? Mm. Culture, I kind of mean hairstyles. <laughs> Lingo, cool outfits, there's plenty going on. Uh, Seabus, talk me through... 
their culture at netball? Well, I think this is netball's time to shine. We really are uh, fantastic role models for not just Gordon. women <laughs> and girls in the community. Have you got but a photo on your phone of the, you know, the girls at the... Uh, I saw you know, girls at the Melbourne Cup a couple of times. Yeah. A little bit messy. <laughs> <laughs> no, and then you wanted to bite on my meat pie, but we score those as well. <laughs> so we're the only sport you get a meat pie and you can eat one. <laughs> Yeah, what about that? The so you, you, you is very, that. you know, look good, feel good, play good. You have the game day braid, you have your tan, you got your, you know, athletic look about you. you. Are the really girly princesses when it comes to sport? But I think the best thing about the Australian Diamonds culture, in particular, is we don't have scandals. Like, when are you going to find out a scandal about netball? I think you're not a real sport unless well, you've had a scandal. No, <laughs> no, no. They, they have their scandals. No one reports on them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't care about the sponsors anyway. We're making up, so we didn't, we didn't need them. Everybody's speaking about no scandals one, except no Gordon. Really knows them when they walk the streets anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so they could be having scandals, we just don't know. <laughs> that girl's our having friends, a good time. Uh, our friends at Tab ran a poll asking uh, what sport has the best in-person atmosphere. Yeah, just have a look, a look at that to see. AFL, John, are sitting at the 38%. top. 38%. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, yeah. that's, that's soccer, How rugby good is leagues that? at nine. Oh, Gordy third. And, uh, I think just that's above horse racing. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever been to the netball? It's an amazing atmosphere. Apparently, it's the best place to oh. take a date if you're a male. It's a very non threatening place to take a date. Where's this? <laughs> 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 really? As long as you can. Because you'll always guarantee to get in the seat, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> Action, yeah. As long as the dates <laughs> between two ten-year-olds <laughs> <laughs> and, and two foot. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> right, uh, uh, let's tackle our final topic of the evening. The question is: Which sport has the most passionate fans? Archie, there's been so much passion shown around World Cup these past couple of weeks. Yeah, incredible. But uh, I tell you what, he's made a good case for cricket. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> oh, really? Oh, really? Oh, really? Oh, really? Oh, that's typical soccer. What are we going yeah. Soccer or football? Exactly. I think I'll be, if I can throw in a second with our sport, I'm good. Mate, <laughs> I'm offering the second up now. Yeah. It, brother. When, when you think of fanatical fans and so, like passion and all that sort of stuff, it's all it's got to be football because they come up with a chance, they sing all day. Um, you go to the cricket, yeah. you might clap. Um, you go to the footy, you get you hurled abuse. There's no really it's singing. It's passion. Just, it's pa what? Passion. Abuse. A passion. Okay. Yeah. It's going to be a You have screaming girls. Archie, you may as well just <laughs> roll around <laughs> the ground pretending to be injured, yeah. right? <laughs> 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 yes. Yes. Hey, wait, did you see some of the challenges in that <laughs> game against? Uh, didn't touch them. Called? Sweden or did not oh. touch them. Yeah. Hey, would you like to hear what the uh, the, the public said uh, about this? Now, this is according again to the Tab Poll. Have a little look at this on the screen. Uh, we can see there that the AFL again at 42. Oh, percent These are most passionate fans. Uh, soccer at 32 percent. Rugby league. Gordy at 18% cricket three. at 3%. 3%? Oh. <laughs> That's what he's saying. 3%? Yes. Oh, you know, passion around that sandpaper, I guys. You've had, you've had two Australians of the year in cricket. Better than any of that. Like, their nicknames were Tubby and Tugger. How Australian yeah. did we get? Get any How Australian does it get? All right, we have to leave it there. This could go. Look, I'd love to keep this going. We probably will in a bar somewhere. Uh, but that's where we end the official debate for tonight. Let's call it a dignified draw. No. <laughs> Bye for now. See you soon. Well done. Now some exciting news about our national sport. Cricket. Cricket? Did he just say cricket? Our national sport's footy. Yeah, football. What do you mean by football? Soccer, mate. Oh, technically we play soccer the most. The Super Bowl? It's basketball! Gymnastics! Go! Hey, Bingo! Based on the number of fans attending the court, AFL is this one of this. What? This just in. <laughs> National sport is sport. Thanks. Clarify, Greg. <laughs> it probably is cricket. Tab. We're on.
You win some, you lose more. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.